So I'm standing here at the corner of the road, right at the top of this little incline. And this fence line is the is the property line. I want to show you one of the most important trails. As you can see, I've got marked here, and then down this way. Uh, that trail down that way goes to Steve Pickett's land. It also goes if you veer off to the left, which I've got marked down at the bottom. Um, that'll take you to the bluff, which is gorgeous. And if you keep on straight, you'll end up on Pickett's trails, uh, which can take you over to to Moonshadow. If you go up and well, it's uh, they're working on those trails. I've just been told to make them more passable and get more easy traffic from Steve's to Moonshadow. Steve's gotten more involved in the community lately. Um, but it all is also really the only way right now to get, if you get on Steve's trails and then you go up and sort of head to the right, you will eventually probably find your way to the spring head, which is up here. And this trail used to go to it, but isn't there anymore. I will show you a little bit more up here. This trail, we got a little bit of this trail left. They logged this land um, in uh, eight, maybe. Uh, did not a terrible job of it. Left a good buffer around the creek. But down here is a big open space where they uh, had the crane and all that. You know, whatever they call those little cranes and the skitter would drop logs and make a big log pile and then they'd load them up into trucks. So it's a pretty flat space. This piece of land, I think it's about 15 acres or something. It goes up, there's a road at the top, right at the top, which goes to one house way out here. Um, that's another fun trip. If you go back down West Valley and take your first real left, um, some kind of incline road, it goes and you can take your next first real left and it goes some neat stuff up there right at the top up here some cool old uh, abandoned mining equipment from like way back um, this big old hopper and uh, steel eye beams and if you could well one other way to get to the get to the spring head is go down there you get in the creek it's actually a gorgeous hike, if it's appropriate weather for being soaked, which it is not at the moment. It is, it is such a nice hike, just to go right up the creek. There's all these neat rock outcroppings and everything. And once you get to the spring head, there's four or five settling boxes, um, a giant stainless tank, probably a thousand or so gallons that feeds these two houses, or this house and where Vaughn's was. Um, and some rock work that's probably railroad times or something. It is a amazing little spring that has been there for at least a hundred years, probably more. Um, I wish I could get some video of it because it is gorgeous and it is one of the bigger selling points of the land. It's on. It's on the. It's on the. It's at the. It's, one, it's up there on the list. You also have the water coming out from the pickets trout dam which is huge but you don't have any head on it right um, the water from up here we uh, it flowed straight into our, our big uh, water tank which is right there um, and then we had pressurized water all over the all over the place spring fed limestone spring pure pure water um, yeah so, what should we look at next? Yeah, so I got the, the path to the left marked with the orange spray paint. Once you go down, you go left to go to those bluffs. And under the bluffs is the spring that's actually on the property. Because those bluffs, the property line dead ends sort of just into the side of the trout pond. Uh, on these sort of low bluffs, you know, not tall bluffs, like 35, maybe 40 feet. Uh, into the trout pond and right on our side of it on the map on the plat map and everything is a spring That's in that trout pond. So half that trout pond in some sense belongs to this property um, But it's not something I ever pushed with him because I wanted his business to succeed and I didn't really have any use for that spring 
uh, when I first got here, I pumped water out from right below his uh, dam before I got the whole uh, gravity fed system running. Uh, that worked all right, but the gravity fed system was the bomb. The, was, whew, so good. Infinite water. I mean, you just just no no limit to it. As long as the system was running good, and something would go wrong every couple of months or so. Uh, I got it to a point where it, stuff went wrong less and less often. But I mean, it's a homestead water system. It's not going to have the kind of uptime that uh that uh you know in municipal water. So if you turn right here, you can see got this tree marked. You can go down this way and uh, go down the uh, incline there of the, where the power lines are cut. Uh, and that's an easy way to get down to where the spring is or where the where the dam is really. That comes down, that comes in, comes in below the dam? No, that comes in above the dam. Yeah, that comes in above the dam. Uh, that's one way. We've already passed one of the other trails that I got marked here. You see right here is a trail that goes down to the, basically the same general area. But this zone here is pretty nice. I thinned out a lot of sweet gum, so the poplars are growing up. That might be a good place to harvest some decent timber because everything here needs total thinning, so much thinning. Got so much wood to harvest, scrubby stuff and better stuff. But it goes on down and there's a flat spot down there, maybe 500 feet from where I'm standing, that's totally overrun in tiny scrubby stuff. That leads me to suspect, particularly with the rock work that you see down there, Somebody was living there. Somebody flattened it out. There was a home site there at some point. Uh, so that's a nice spot down there. I mean, it takes a whole lot of thinning, as does everything around here. But that's an interesting spot. That could be a really nice house site. Uh, just extending this road right over the other side. So that's where I would put one. I'd put one here-ish. Put one right down there. That's three house sites with real easy road access. If that's the sort of thing you're looking for. And on the other side, other hand, you can go down this ridge line and uh, find yourself whatever. This is a pretty nice house site, right under the oak. Well, that's a big old oak. Wouldn't want to be too much under it. Uh, let's see. I've done the walking tours, uh, so I don't need to do that again. Maybe I should like video myself a little bit. Uh, let's see what else I was going to tell you. Um, yeah, so Moon Shadow, I just talked to them yesterday. They're very interested in giving people tours uh, who could take care of the land in a good way. They're very motivated to have folks around. They say much more homesteading types are moving into the valley. So the valley is a really natural spot. It's, it's pretty, it's really undeveloped. It's got a lot of good water. It's got a lot of good soil. It's got good climate of uh, warm, but not so warm that, you know, uh, pests, soil pests never die, that sort of thing. You know, the ticks die in the winter. You're not gonna get too many parasites that way, although there are ticks in this kind of brush. Um, so we get the occasional snow. Here, look, this is another trail. And if you come out here, just uh, keep your eyes out for these trail marks that I just put out for your self-guided tours. That goes down, um, sort of connects to a trail that cuts along the side of the ridge there above the beaver pond. Yeah, on the topic of the valley, uh, it's flat and easy to get around. Like, that was one of the things that I really liked about it from a doomer sort of perspective is you could get around on a bicycle there that it would, in a way that it would be very challenging to get around Asheville or what have you. Uh, it's also 
got this big, uh, let's see, from our direction, basically Walden's Ridge, which is that one over there, the one that we're not on the side of, is a giant buffer for the superstorms that come in that come in out of the west. Uh, so it's really protected from weather in that in that respect. You're not going to get any kind of tornado. I've seen a little. I've seen trees knocked down in the mid ridge of the valley, uh, where winds can really get up some speed. But over here, I mean, it gets gusty, but you never really even see. I mean, Katrina knocked some trees down. The tail end of Katrina knocked some trees down. But it's nothing like, you know, tornadoes taking out whole towns like it is other spots, Midwest and whatnot. Uh, and, uh, you know, also geologically stable as long as that uh, whatever rift doesn't actually start up. Here's another trail. It goes down there. You can see the water. Oh, the beaver pond is so pretty. So much potential there for so much things, so much... I don't know what, anything, all kinds of stuff. Chinapas, I believe, is the, the word for the uh, thing that I always wanted to do. What I was always imagining was you drop some of these trees down that away, cut off all the branches, haul the tree back up, and then the branches turn into those chinapas, uh, like little plantable islands. But what you really got to do is get real access down there at the bottom of, uh, at the shore, because it grows up like crazy. Privet, honeysuckle, uh, uh, multiflora rose, that lovely little trifecta. Um, so yeah, mowing, I had a uh, FS90 still string mower that had a blade on. That worked pretty good. I could get in, you know, tactical spots all over the place with it. But uh, one of those billy goat push mowers with the big blade would be real nice for clearing out some stuff, clearing out stuff. And if you had enough labor, just get in there with loppers and just lop and lop and lop. But of course, trail maintenance, because that shit just comes right back um, the next year. So you got to do that two or three times a year every year, which is nuts. 